The issues discussed on the Roll Call Room podcast do not reflect the opinions of any specific agency and are the views of the host or guest only. Any persons discussed may be fictional for comedic purposes. This podcast is rated explicit and listener discretion is advised. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You'll go through some failures. Even when you're struggling, even when you're discouraged, and you feel like other people have given up on you, don't ever give up on yourself. What are you going to do now? How are you going to flip it upside down and say, Roger that, now I'm going to harness this shit, and you'll read about me years from now? Nobody is going to hit as hard as life, but it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, how much you can take and keep moving forward. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth, but you got to be willing to take the hits. Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, you've done it. You gain more by giving. You get more by building. You learn more by listening. The difference isn't the way people handle themselves when things go well. The moments that really matter are the moments when life tells you no. Rainbows only follow storms and loss creates leaders and whatever goes around comes around. We have a chance and an opportunity to change the world because nobody changes in good times. People only change in bad times. No one changes when they're comfortable. They change when they're uncomfortable. We have a chance now to change the world. I am somebody. I will be the change in the world. There is no excuse for not trying. Where you are right now doesn't have to determine where you'll end up. No one's written your destiny for you. You write your own destiny. You make your own future. Dr. King once said, before we reach the majestic shores of the promised land, there is a frustrating and bewildering wilderness ahead. We must still face prodigious hilltops of opposition and gigantic mountains of resistance. But with patient and firm determination, we will press on. The future rewards those who press on. With patient and firm determination, I'm going to press on. I don't have time to feel sorry for myself. I don't have time to complain. I'm gonna press on. Stop complaining. Stop crying. We are gonna press on. We've got work to do. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Roll Call Room podcast. And now your host, Nick and Mike. Hey everybody! Ah. All right. Hey, bienvenidos! Hey everybody! Welcome, welcome, welcome! We are finally back, Mike and I together at last. Um, Mike has set up his studio in his home, and I am in the roll call room studio at my house. Uh, we are super happy to finally be able to get together and do these more often now that we both have our own studio. Mike, how you been, bud? <clears throat> uh, I'm doing well, man. I'm 
surviving day by day. <laughs> no, what day is uh, this? Is day six of quarantine for me, and this is what day nine for you? Um, yeah, I'm actually on vacation, man. Um, now you're on vacation. <clears throat> you're on no, I, was, um, I had booked a trip to. You're supposed to be at Disney for 13 days. And oh, it was, yeah, it was bought and paid for. So, did you get yeah. your money back? Yeah, but they were. It was kind of weird with Disney, man. They they didn't um, they didn't like hit you up and like say like, hey, you're you're reserved. It's closed. Here's your money back. You, you had, had to, to go. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck, Disney? Yeah, and it, I had to hear it through the news that it was like closed indefinitely, and I'm like, wait a minute, y'all motherfuckers got my money, so I had to hit them back, and they were cool. They were like, yeah, we understand, but I'm like. Why the fucking didn't you just give me the money back? You know, what are you going to do? Just like hope, hope I forgot or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh so, man. I didn't know that you had a trip to the Disney plan, man. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. We were supposed to stay at the beach, stay on Disney. So oh, man. Yeah, the well, kids are bummed, but you know, fucking piece of shit. Coronavirus, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, Mike and I, we've talked a lot on the phone. Um, just recently, we were able to break out of the house, and I, I rescued Mike with some toilet paper. We did. We did. Allowed, yeah, we weren't allowed to touch each other or anything like that. Um, you no, know, and then we got some shit for some pictures that we took out in public <laughs> from our agent. Uh, you know, you know what it is, man. It's like, um, you know. Uh, it's it's crazy because you think with the pandemic that's going on, it would somehow change this culture, mm -hmm. of, like to be more sympathetic to people's situations. Or, but we're always people are always reverting back to the default, as in this guy's fucking scamming. Yeah, you know what I mean, like it's just it, come on, guys. Like you know, what I mean? if you're scamming during COVID, then you you have some other fucking problems going on. But let's, well, let's, let's try to give people the benefit of the doubt. You know what I mean? Well, and 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 I'll tread very lightly because you know you're my union guy representing me. Yeah, I'm your shit. union guy. Yeah, that's going on currently right now. Uh, I can't wait to tell that story once it's over, one way or the other, when it's over. But uh, same thing happened. I did a Facebook Live the first day that I went out on COVID leave, and no sooner do I finish my Facebook Live, I get a phone call. Not to check on, you know, see how I'm doing, see how my family's doing, see how my kids are doing. Right. Anybody, like, what's your symptoms? How's your fever doing? No, it was, hey, um, I really need you to send a doctor's note over. And I know where that's coming from because I was a sergeant. And you were a sergeant, too. You know where that's yeah. coming from. That's yeah. coming from above you saying, hey, this fucking guy's scamming. You know, um, you need to call him up and fucking you know, get a doctor's note. And I just, it, it irritated me for two different reasons. One, I had already sent all that stuff in, so I'm not stupid. And then second mm -hmm. of all, it wasn't even, well, back up. The person who did call me did ask and make sure that I was okay. Did ask and make sure that my family was okay. Really good leader, stand up guy. He's my boss. He's a good dude. I really like him. He's looked out for me a lot lately. Um, but it's above that. It's 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 not even a text message, not even a phone call. You don't even have to call me. You can just send me a text message and be like, hey, I'm thinking about you and your family. I've not gotten that once in the six days that I've been around. Um, and the sad part is, is that I had had a conversation with my chief, our chief, the day I went out on leave. I had driven all the way to work, found out that I was exposed to somebody that had uh, that may have possibly had COVID. And I was on the phone with the chief over union stuff, Mike, and it came up in conversation and he was like, you got to go home. You can't mm -hmm. stay here. And, and, I, and at that time, I had not displayed any symptoms. I didn't have a fever. I didn't have anything going on. But he was like, listen, I can't afford for you to infect everybody else, whether you have it or you don't have it. Just the idea that you may have it. I can't mm -hmm. have you. Here. And this is from the top. So somewhere between my boss and the top there's a breakdown in between there and there's yeah. a lot of in between there. Uh, and I'm dubbing this episode COVID leadership. Mm, like that. I like that a lot. Mm, mm, mm. Because this uh, epidemic or pandemic, whatever the fuck you want to call it, 
has really exposed, and we talked about this in our last episode that you and I got to do together, which was a couple of weeks ago, which is, is the really, really good leaders are really shining right now. They're really excelling. And the closet leaders are excelling as well. And those are the ones that don't wear gold, that aren't command or supervisors. Those are the ones that are at the ground level that are taking care of each other, like fellow officers taking care of fellow officers, fellow detectives taking fellow care of fellow detectives, and really looking out for each other. Where the ones that were not good leaders really are being exposed because those are the ones that um, – are not coming into work, they're quote unquote teleworking, or they're making decisions based on um, their their poor leadership skills or their poor training to making decisions for boots on the ground folks like like you and I, uh, even though we're on leave, um, but really really silly decisions that are being made. And I'm not I'm not talking agency specific. Um, you and I have gotten many, many emails from different people around the United States um, where some of the policies and some of the things that these people are doing just blows my fucking mind or the lack of decision. So I got two things. Um, I'm tracking 100 um, percent. There is definitely a major breakdown between the top and the bottom. And I can see that firsthand. I'm not stupid. Um, and. <clears throat> It's, it's evident when decisions are made quickly when the right people are in the room, and I'll just leave that at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, I've, you know, for my situation, I've seen good leadership. People stepped up. They reached out, um, and they said, hey, what's your situation like? Can we do anything for you guys? And I, I deeply, deeply appreciate that. However, on the other hand, um, not to take anything away from that because I appreciate that, but my first line supervisor has been talking to me about COVID, my sergeant, for months, bro, mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, you know, the union can step in and do a little bit of here and there. And I was like, honestly, dude, I was like, what the hell is Corona? You know what I mean? But he was tracking this thing from when it was overseas um, mm -hmm. before it even came here. Now, that's my sergeant. So, you know, he's had these conversations with people that are above him that make bigger, greater decisions. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, um, and not, not just with our agency, but I don't know if it's just a lack of knowledge in the current news and trends and things that are coming or just carelessness because they don't care because it's not in their wheelhouse, you know, kind of not my department or not my bureau, not my problem. Right. But this shit. If when the president decides to stop letting fucking planes into the country, I ain't never seen no shit like that, bro. Yeah. yeah. And that's a major red flag. Like we need to be doing like right then and there, as soon as those decisions are made, like back in February or whenever this happened, you should be ordering personal protective equipment. Right, let me back up. You should already have some of this in stockpile mm -hmm. and, you know, not fucking these masks that were, you know, out out through all the department what are those uh wmd weapons of mass destruction kits that are fucking 10 years expired because they're like waiting on the next terrorism attack to actually stand up and do something about it mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. we're now we're running in like oh we need mass well you stupid fuck everybody and their mother needs mass now the masks are gone what are you gonna do and and i don't know you were gonna say something but that's that's what i'm getting at is like we need. To, we should have been ahead of this. So the conversation. It's not like the conversation wasn't being had. It was mm -hmm. being had, but no one was making fucking decisions, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. Well, and I I wrote something down on my pad because it's kind of funny, and I just wanted to make you laugh. Um, my, what I find funny is is when you go through these agencies, these police headquarters and training facilities where they have those um, hand sanitizer, the, those automatic hand sanitizer, like, um, machines that are on the side, on the wall that right. have been, but, but they've been empty for like fucking a year. Uh, you know, how dirty of a department are you that you can't even fucking like refill your hand sanitizer shit? Like that stuff, like you said, your custodial staff, um, should have a stockpile of hand sanitizer foam or gel or whatever the fuck you're using. And as far as the masks are concerned, um, I don't want to get agency specific, but 
WMD gear was confiscated, I don't know, a year ago? You know, more than that. It was like two or three. Generous, right. Yeah. (laughs) At what point were you going to replace the stuff? Were we were we no longer under a terrorist attack, especially in the U.S. Capitol region? Yeah, yeah, no shit. <laughs> you know, like, and, like, and, and what baffles me is no that, terrorism here. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. We only have the Pentagon slammed into, um, but there's nothing to worry about. Give us back your WMD. I much rather have the expired stuff than nothing, and then to have um, agencies give you one. N95 mask and expect for you to have that last for a very long time is absolutely insane, insane. Uh, and I'm not blaming the staff that that handles that kind of stuff, but it's definitely decision. I read an article this morning before we came on from Mark Cuban, which is called um, he called this United States 2.0. And I 100 percent believe that, which is we are now in a different state of readiness This is what I'm going to say exactly what you said the last episode. This is a live exercise. You will no longer just buy toilet paper just to get by. You'll have a stockpile. You'll have masks. You'll have sanitizer gel. This will be the norm going forward for people where it's a wake up call for them. Um, uh, um, Weapons. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, people. Yeah. Firearms, you know, people that were anti-firearm. My, my yeah. weren't we talking in the Blessed Commonwealth two A was so close to being passed. It was so so close, and now uh, all gun stores are deemed uh, essential businesses. You can't even get rounds right now. You can't even get firearms right now, and that's not by accident. Uh, there's a reason why our founding members put that in the Constitution. Yeah, it's 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 like when Jay from First Warrior posted uh, that meme when you realize that the uh, uh, the Second Amendment was not because of you know sporting like for sport mm-hmm. or for fishing and gaming <laughs> like that's not what it's about. And I guarantee you, I would have loved to seen like when you run into Cabela's or Bass Pro Shops and you're running in to buy a firearm and they're like, hold on. Um, to finalize this purchase, are you a registered Democrat or a Republican? And then just go and mm-hmm. see what those numbers look like. Because I yeah. guarantee you, mm-hmm. 99.9% of them, it's not to get into politics, are not Republican Blue- purchases. Yeah. These are Democrats that are like, holy fuck. Because if you're on the conservative side of the fence, you have some sort of, you have more than one gun. For and the I, most and I'll tell you. I'll tell you a personal story. So I get this text message, got a friend of mine, ultra liberal, ultra, ultra liberal. Um, him and I have gotten into heated discussion. And I'm not a very political person, Mike. You know that me and I, me and you hardly ever He's talk. He's a politics. socialist. <laughs> He's a socialist. <laughs> me or him? No, him, 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 him. Oh. Bernie, a Bernie supporter. Yeah. So I only look at politics and I'm like a lot of cops, I only look at politics as, as how it benefits or it negatively impacts me and your policies. So when you're the president, I look at your policies on collective bargaining. I look at your policies, how they've been detrimental to to the, the war on drugs and law enforcement as a whole, federal, state, and local. So I'll give that caveat. A friend of mine is straight up blue. Doesn't matter. Um whether or not he believes or doesn't believe in their policies, but he's just straight blue. So I get this when the Corona pandemic um, epidemic, whatever breaks out, I get this text message from him and he's like, Hey, do you know anywhere where I can buy a handgun? And I'm like, no, like everywhere is sold out. I said, even the gun ranges are sold out. And he's like, is there any way, I know you have a lot of firearms. Is there any way that you can lend me a firearm until this thing blows over? And I'm sitting back. First of all, I didn't. Okay, just for you know, for II when you're transcribing this, <laughs> um, just had another charge. Um, but uh, I didn't, and and I scolded him, and I and we got in. He he actually wound up coming around, and now realizing what the big gun debate is is this is the reason why is because when shit breaks bad and Walmart is limited to 10 customers an hour and there's a riot that breaks out and you're walking out with a pack of toilet paper or chicken or whatever you have in your hand and somebody tries to 
uh, physically assault you or kill you for that, and you have a sidearm on you and you defend yourself, there's the reason why it's for personal protection. So it was kind of it was kind of funny when you told when we talked about firearms that that story kind of you know yeah he um, you know I said this um, you know a long time ago like you know you can't I don't know history is going to have to repeat itself mm-hmm. and I didn't know it was going to come this fast in this fashion um, and right now history is repeating itself because we're at a request for boots on the ground policing. Like yes. right now, there is this boots on the request for enforcement because, you know, yeah, we have a stay at home order. But what happens if that order is escalated to mandated, mandatory, you know, at gunpoint, boots on the ground, forced you in your house, the National Guard or the, um, um, yeah, the National Guard or the military, um, mm-hmm. they're going to do it in con- conjunction with first line police officers. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're going to expect us to enforce those laws, like just not even that extreme, but just as it is now that people are calling in, um, because a lot of agencies were getting a lot of inundated with a lot of emails about agencies, um, changing their response. So a lot of people aren't, yeah, exactly. There, a lot of people need to understand a lot of listeners, a lot of these agencies are going to a priority one and two response, meaning like a fight in progress or a robbery in progress or, you know, any kind of burglary, any kind of major crime that's in progress, we will respond to or they will respond to. But a lot of these frivolous noise complaints or barking dog or parking violations or, you know, stupid shit like that, they're not mm-hmm. going to. Mm-hmm. But I know here in the Commonwealth, they put a 10 person cap on, um, you know, gr- gatherings and groups and stuff like that. And people are like, constantly calling in and saying oh this is what's going on this is what's going on and it's like wait a minute are are you guys gonna are you gonna meet us out there and record what we're doing are we not doing what we used to do are you gonna pull your cell phone out and say leave them alone they're in a group of nine you know what i mean oh they're not doing that shit anymore where are you where's this cop watch bullshit they're fucking scared sitting in the house like a bunch of pussies Mm -hmm. they're not out here on the front come out here on the front lines and record what we're doing now with a fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like come well, out now I, and, and do it and criticize us. Yeah. And, and I, I always knew the pendulum would switch out and we would get out of the Ferguson effect either through a terrorist attack or something like this. I just didn't think it would be this large of a magnitude because prior to nine 11, it was the same thing. It was anti-cop rhetoric and it was going on and on and on. And then nine 11 happened and you couldn't walk down the streets without you know, pizza being thrown in your face for free or coffee for free. I mean, I don't think I, I don't, I don't think I paid for a meal for two months after nine 11. Um, and it's good to see the support, but it's also just, it's interesting from this perspective in our profession to see the hypocrisy. Like you have companies like Starbucks, no, no more than a year ago, they were lambasting mm-hmm. us, um, Philly cops were getting roasted over removing a homeless person from one of their uh, Starbucks locations. And then Starbucks takes 10 steps back and they're like, oh, oh, it wasn't us. It was the police. And then they close down all their stores. They do a training. And in the training, it blames the cops. And now Starbucks is sitting there going, you know, we're going to give free coffee to first responders from now until May 1 or whatever. Um, Too little, too late, in my opinion, quite honestly. Um, I think some businesses and some people that are anti-cop need to really reevaluate why the police were established. Uh, And speaking to your response, the fact that some of these agencies waited to the very, very last minute to reduce the amount of response and exposure that these officers are getting is a little ridiculous. Some of these jurisdictions not closing down their jurisdiction or not hazard pay to their first responders is absolutely ridiculous because you still have municipalities and jurisdictions that are penny pinching how much is this is going to cost versus the wellness of their first responders. I'm not talking agency specific, but I think also some of these agencies need to evaluate reducing the response from priority uh, one through four or one through five, whatever way you categorize it, to just one and two beyond COVID. 
after this epidemic is over, maybe this is the reason why our officers have a mental health crisis going on right now. You're overworking them. Why do you need to send out officers for dog complaints? Why can't this be handled over the phone by somebody else? Why can't there be one or two sworn officers up in the Department of Emergency Communication when these calls for service come in, they get routed to an officer who's up there on light duty or on mental light duty or whatever it is and tell somebody, tell a citizen, no, we're not coming out for that. Or, okay, thank you for the information. Uh, Thanks very much. And we'll file in the go fuck yourself file. I think we need to evaluate that stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, some agencies are a little bit lax on calls or service response, but it's it's a it's a service, and a lot of other agencies want to give the service, even though it's not police matter. They forget that we're law enforcement officers, and we're not a fucking you know Better Business Bureau review where you could just sit back and just kind of. Oh, you know, how was your service today, sir? Would you give me a five-star rating? I mean, we're fucking cops. We're law law enforcement officers. You know what I mean? This isn't a fucking Gallup survey. We're fucking law enforcement officers. Yelp. Yeah. And, um, and that's what we're getting away from. And that's what we need to get back to the basics about when do you need a police response? Mm -hmm. Um, I know we're jumping around a lot, but with businesses you talked about, I've never seen this ever in my time, but BP Amico stepping up and giving 50 cents off a gallon of gas to first responders. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's unprecedented. I've never seen anything like that, dude. Um, I also like to not to cut you off. um, The officers that have fully electric cars like myself that are not dependent on uh, um, petroleum, petro, petro, petro. petro, Yeah. Gas. Um, EV Go, which is a company that um, is very, very big in the United States, they deal with uh, charging stations. They're the second highest under Tesla. Same thing. Uh, good job, EV Go, for all first responders. They cut their rates in half, uh, which were already ridiculously low. So if you've if you don't have an electric car, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But I could basically, uh-huh. yeah, I could basically fill my car for two dollars for three hundred miles. So. Oh, Take that, motherfuckers. Yeah, that's cute. Um, but anyways, yeah, so BP, <laughs> <laughs> BP Amico, um, shout out to them. And then as you're talking, um, because they really go unnoticed, shout out to our Department of Emergency Communications, our dispatchers. Um, I know they're fielding a lot of bullshit calls because a lot of people – you know, or like, oh, there's 10, there's 11 people out here. You better get them. Well, you stupid fuck, it's a city. You know, are they, you know, whatever, are they passing through? Are they doing this or whatever? And they got to feel those calls all day long. I mean, that's going to take a toll on your mental health right there in itself because, you know, that's not a fucking police. I mean, uh, that's not a priest problem in a sense. Like, it's not urgent, but I'm guaranteed they're giving them a lot of shit and they're constantly calling up there, nagging them with that shit 24 7. I, I think one of our guys was saying that someone called or another one of our listeners said that someone said there was a helicopter out past curfew and it was actually the police helicopter that was out. (laughs) (laughs) We'll tell him, we'll tell him to quiet down, sir. (laughs) There's a helicopter and it's uh, 2,100 hours uh, on the curfew. uh, Jesus Christ. I mean, you can't make this shit up, man. I mean, I would have never, yes, going back to your point, this is going to change policing forever. If it doesn't, well, then we didn't learn anything from it, uh, and that's the, that's what we don't want. Um, we should have done, been done things earlier. And it's not like I can understand if you're just to clarify this. I can understand if you're in the private sector, and John, who's the building engineer, should have ordered more hand sanitizers, or it would have been nice to get him them PPE equipment or a mask. You know, John. John really didn't know. John's retired. This is his second job. We like John. John's a nice guy. He's our building maintenance guy. We're not talking about that. We're fucking cops. We're first responders. Mm -hmm. This should be at the forefront. As much task forces that we work in unison with and federal law, like, you don't don't say that this was never going to be a fucking thing. The problem is. You think it was money? No, the problem is, is that everyone's living in their own fucking world. You have fire and EMS medics over here. You have the fucking hospital over here. 
you have the PD down here, you have the sheriff's office over here, you have corrections over here, and you have all these fucking, you know, coalition of the government and all this other stuff in it. But no one's talking about the potential of a fucking pandemic. They are we now. Were, well, they are now, but no one was talking about everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone. It was like about sleeper cells, terrorists. Uh, when then and then that went quiet for a while. That doesn't mean that the terrorists just went home. It was active shooter. It was hot and heavy. Okay, when's the next active shooter? Right. And again, it's always reactive in law enforcement. You cannot be reactive. The problem is, is when you're a chief or deputy chief and you sit in your ivory tower or a sheriff, and you're like, oh yeah, we it'd be nice to do this. Like, no, it's not. It wouldn't be nice to do this. You have guys and girls on the front line. And mm -hmm. like I've said since day one, it's not about us contracting it because I looked at the officer down Memorial page this morning. There's like six fucking guys on there who mm -hmm. have died from this thing. And guess what? They're our fucking age, bro. They're not 80 and over high risk. These motherfuckers are like 38 to 45 years old. That's not good. Mm -hmm. They're contracting this thing. And it's not about us getting it. It's about giving it to our family members and what can compromise their immune systems. So again, like everything else, yeah, we take an oath, we sign the line, we raise our right hand, we put our hand over the Bible, we swear to the Constitution of the United States of America, and we take that risk. Yeah, we take that risk, but we're giving those tools to be able to get into a gunfight. We're giving those tools to be able to get home to use a taser or whatever, or go hands-on or ground fighting or whatever the case may be. But we're fighting a silent fucking killer. Yeah. What are you giving us? What tools Without are you tools. giving us? And not only just the tools, but the reassurance that you're in our best interest. A lot of agencies aren't doing that either. I'm getting, we're getting, I don't know, man, we must have hit a fucking flood switch with all these emails that we got coming in. Cause mm -hmm. guys are just like, listen, I work at, you know, I work at an airport and our fucking chief is saying X, Y, and Z. He's not, he's more worried about a fucking schedule than taking care of our guys. He's worried about getting his, he's using this, he's capitalizing on this pandemic to get his fucking way with our schedule, with how he wants us to wear our uniforms, with, you know, this, this, and that. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? And it's pretty, it's pretty evident that that's what these guys are doing because it's not just one officer that's sending us these emails and it's just not one airport agency, it's just multiple. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and you, you, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think when we got a pandemic going on, when we got a crisis going on and you're worrying about. You're worrying about investigating. Stupid uh, stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, I just think you got to prioritize. Yeah, people, people, officers are stressed out as it is about their family, about if their their kids getting it, their spouses getting it. And then you're throwing crap on top of them is just you really don't you really don't care about them, about the mental health factor of what this is going to do to your your workers. And, and I agree with you. We get a flurry of emails um, from from people that were like, can you believe I just got I just got written up for not having two pens in my uniform and I'm asking for face masks and I can't even get a fucking face mask. You know, and then you got agencies that can't get face masks and they're being told, all right, now you can wear your own, you can wear your own face mask, but it can only be a solid color. Like, good luck finding <laughs> one that's a fucking solid color. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and then uh, we'll come back and um, we'll get this, uh, we'll get this episode wrapped up in the books. Where we go? Look out for the cops, though. Cash food. Word up. Two for fives over here, baby. Word up. Two for fives. Them niggas got garbage down the way. Word up. Cash you know food. Everything around me. Creamed it. Yeah. Check this old fly shit out. Word up. Cash food. Everything on the around joint. me. Creamed Get the here money. We, here we go. Dollar, Check dollar this bill, shit. Yeah. I grew up on the crime side, the New York Times side. Staying alive was no job. At second hands. Moms bounced on old man. So then we moved to Shallon Land. Do you want to help the Roll Call Room podcast keep going? Of course you do. 
Join Patreon and pledge to the show each month. Tiers start at $5 and you can get some pretty cool shit with it, including swag and access to listen to episode clips early. So put that Starbucks coffee down and help my dad keep the show going. Don't be a fucking Steve. Go to rollcallroom.com to pledge today. With this one and that one, pulling up gats for fun. But it was just the dream for the team who was a fiend. Started smoking wolves at 16. All right, we are back from break. I love that song so much. I said to Mike, I was like, we're going to come back from break. Cream, bro. It's a classic. Dude, I love that song. It's perfect. Wu Tang Clan, 36 Chambers, bro. Get your- love it. Protect your neck. Um, so, you know, Mike, I got a couple of emails also from some jurisdictions around about some some cute Enron bookkeeping bullshit that some jurisdictions are doing to prevent um, from paying their officers hazard pay or time and a half pay or where, double time. I don't know how you guys get paid um, in different jurisdictions, but um I know in one particular jurisdiction in Texas, which is our uh, one of our highest markets, um, the jurisdiction, which is a county, wound up um, closing non-essential but being on call. So it was a way. Yeah. Um, so basically what they did was is they closed down um, non-essential parts of their county but kept their essential part of their county open so that it wasn't a full county closure so that their first responders wouldn't get time and a half. Yeah, that's um, bullshit. It's terrible, man. And and, and this is this is a, a real for you folks that are under the 5 year mark, which is usually when you become vested in your retirement. This is a big wake up call for some of you that are with your jurisdictions on whether or not you want to stay after this is over. I I will give you the caveat and the asterisk. I'm not telling you to leave during this pandemic. Because the chances of you getting hired for the next year in any jurisdiction is pretty fucking rough. Right. Because they're canceling police academies, they're canceling application processes and stuff like that. Where you are is where you should stay until this pandemic epidemic passes. But I am telling you to watch very, very closely how your jurisdictions treat you during instances like this, national emergencies like this. If you're not getting paid properly, you're not being treated properly, you're not getting the proper equipment, is this something that you want to do for the next 20 to 25 years? And if the answer to that is no, then this is not the profession. Back up. That's not fair. It's not the profession. It's the jurisdiction that you're working for. So the ones that are over five years, I know you're vested. I know I know all that stuff. I'm with you. I'm with you. No, uh, good point, man. I mean, a hundred percent because really a first responder is a first responder. I mean, this is what we do, uh, mm-hmm. right. Either whether it's, uh, you know, when we had right after nine 11 or the, um, DC sniper mm-hmm. work during that time, you were around here, um, or anything like that. I mean, this is, it's the dice. It's as you roll the dice, it's the game you play. Um, mm-hmm. however, um, you're going to be more uh, susceptible to jumping right into the fire, you know, Valhalla to the gates of hell and back when you have the right leadership in front of you mm-hmm. and they're, and they're, they're in your best interest. And they say, Hey, here's your PP. Here, actually, here's two, two masks. Um, just go ahead, you know, use your best discretion. We use, we allow, we give you the training to, uh, to take someone's life. If the, the situation accounts for it, um, we feel that you could put on a mask if the situation accounts for it. Without having to make, I've heard from some guy, some guy emailed me the other day. He said that he's got to ask permission from his supervisor before he puts the mask on, on a call for service or, or they don't want them or even just recently the day before yesterday with the CDC guidelines coming out on with Friday, Friday. And they're saying that, you know, it's optional to wear a mask in public. Okay, yeah, it's optional when you have to run out to the grocery store for 15, 20 minutes, not when you're fucking running calls for service on a 12-hour shift as a police officer. You should be wearing a fucking mask. I don't care if it's a balaclava or what, but they're saying, oh, you could wear that. And th- and this is where we're what getting into the – What about okay. a ski mask? What about a ski mask? Yeah, I mean – even if you could do, you could do a half I mean, a body yeah. like we've done in our pictures, you know, they have those, um, shout out to what's that company that's always on the fucking, oh yeah. 
Damn, that's I where I wish I could plug them. They can do a sponsor for us. <laughs> well, I'll shoot. I'll reach out to them and plug them if they do a sponsorship. What is I'm it? Not, something Shields or something Shield or whatever. I don't, I'm not saying it. Okay. Anyway, um, you know, throw one of those on. You know what I mean? You could get you know five for fucking twenty or whatever. Throw mm-hmm. throw a black one on or whatever the case may be, or navy blue or gray or fucking brown. I don't know what the fuck you. They had all this money to find tattoo sleeve covers. You could get a fucking cover for the face or take those tattoo sleeve covers and cut them in half and start sewing them so you could fucking cover your face. You know what I mean? (laughs) Think outside the fucking box, man. You know, you want to put a fucking agency badge on the mouth, whatever the case may be. (laughs) Whatever, bro. I mean, this is the problem. We're getting away from the fucking need, bro. It's like, here's a guideline. We always find a way to fuck shit up. You know, <laughs> you want us to wear a mask? The fucking CDC says wear a fucking mask. But and, it has a solid color. But they're like, oh, well, it's got to be uniformed and it can't be too aggressive. And it, I mean, shut the fuck up. Do you, you think, know? and I said this on our Facebook Live last night, I said, do you think the average citizen cares that my faith is the American flag? Or I mean, I can understand if it's a if it's a half naked lady on there, or it's like, you know, don't tread Joker on her face. <laughs> yeah, or, or 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 the face with the cigar hanging out of the mouth, and you know, that, you know, I can understand that. But resources are scarce. Okay, if you don't have a mask already or fabric mask already. The chances of you getting one right now, like if you went on Amazon right now and tried to buy one, good fucking luck. What I have is when I had my motorcycle, I bought those in large quantity because, you know, when you're riding on a motorcycle and you don't have a windshield, you don't want fucking bugs in your face or you don't want the wind in your face. So I bought a whole bunch of them. And I could tell you when I get done with COVID leave, when I get back to work, I am going to wear what's available to me. And if you want to add that on to whatever else you're looking into, fine, do it. But I'm not going to turn around and I'm not going to bring it home to my family. And these are the things where, you know, agencies need to think about what is a priority to you right now? Uniformity or or officer safety? Um, There's a fan that sent me a picture in Pennsylvania. Their agencies are no longer even requiring them to wear their uniforms anymore. Oh, really? They're allowing them to come in in jeans and a shirt, a polo shirt, because they they have carry they have a um, uh, over carry out of carry uh, vest like we have. Who the fuck cares what pants you're wearing? Who the fuck cares what shirt you're wearing? Who cares? Um, and that's that adds into officer wellness, comfort, comfort. Uh, if my agency turned around, sent out an email, hey, listen, until further notice, this is what we're going to ask for you guys to do is wear 511s, which were issued, and polo shirts, which oh, were okay. issued. Um, those are your comfort uniform until further notice. Why? Because they're easier to clean. They're easier to take off and throw in the washer and the dryer instead of bringing it to the dry cleaner. Now, I'm just thinking that up right now. Is anybody else thinking that up from the jurisdiction? Probably not. Uh, Probably. I mean, you're you're talking about the option to wear soft uniforms. Uh, I don't really. I'll be honest with you. I don't think it matters with the uniform thing. I, I can see your point. I don't think that they should be allowed to wear plain clothes. <laughs> they yeah. are to carry. That's a little bit it's much. I mean, jurisdiction. I think it was ten officers. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think you know that that's a little extreme, but you know. Because right at this point, you don't need no posers out there trying to pretend like they're cops and no one knows who they are. And then it could be a bad day. But mm. it, that's that's different. But um, oh, going back to mass, I want to make this I want to make this very, very clear. Um, we I'm the union president. Nick is the vice president. He's my right hand. We had a, multiple discussions what we could do for our officers right now in the middle of everything. It's very hard to actually it's, – it's actually harder than you think to actually come up with ideas to be able to serve our members because um, we're always keeping them first. Even though we have our things going on with our families, our members are always at the forefront. Um, and we started thinking, and one of the ideas we came up with was if there was a, some way or shape, shape or form we can get masks for our members. Um, mm-hmm. 
So I reached out to uh, the Oakley group, the Oakley group. Um, there are on, on our social media platforms, uh, Will and Marcella, they're both retired police officers. Uh, they, they worked in our agency. They're good people, uh, husband and wife. Um, their daughter is high risk, not to share too much, but I know they do a lot of fundraising and stuff. Um, so they're pretty much locked down. However, when I went to them and asked them, hey, can you reach in your inner circle and see if you can get us some mass? They have they are on it. I mean, like instrumental, like you've never would have seen or believed. Um, they're going to get not only us masks for our frontline officers uh, that are all uniformed one color. Um, they're going to get <laughs> they're going to get us masks, uh, but for the entire, it looks like they're going to be able to get it for uh, the sheriff's office as well. Awesome. Uh-huh. So I really want to plug them and push them out. Um, if you're in refinancing your house right now because the interest rates are ridiculously low, or if you're looking at a first time home buyer program. Um, anything at all, even just to shoot the shit to see, Hey, what is my house of praise at? Um, I got Will doing some stuff for me. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal first responders and they get it. They're not trying to get over. Um, they keep us at the forefront of everything they do because they want what's best for us. Cause they know what we do out here every day cause they've done it. So the Oakley group, uh, Will and Marcella, the Oakley group. And let me give you their website too. It's www.home with oakley.com and oakley is o a k l e y so it's home with oakley.com uh and you can email uh marcella which is m a r s e l l a at home with oakley.com um and their phone number is 703-801-6141 uh if you're in the uh dca area uh, dc maryland uh and virginia area uh, solid, solid folks. Um, former police officers, they are awesome. Always been there for us, and they continue to keep um, doing for us. They've bought food for officers yes. in this epidemic. They just, you know, all 300 plus officers, they paid for them to have a free meal, which was fucking awesome. Solid, solid group of people. Um, so, um, and, the, and the thing is, and the thing is, is and this is important <clears throat> Will and Marcella. They're not capitalizing on this to gain attention or traction. They've been doing this for first responders since they left the department because yeah. it's it's a part of they're a part of the family. They they've always been on this. They didn't they don't have to do any of this, um, but they've always given back to first responders in some way, shape, or form. And and they're just selfless people. And it's 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 pretty crazy to see how genuine they are because I'm like, hey, you know, I'm like I'm looking at these masks. They're like dude, say less, like we're on it. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, you think you can take her like, and then within the hour, she was like, I got 750 masks coming your way in the next 10 days. So I'm like, and she was like, she made like a Facebook page. I mean, just selfless, man. I mean, they don't have to do any of this. They'd be like, yeah, I can ask a couple people and I'll get, you know, the typical reach around that you get from anybody else. But they, uh, you know, they, they go above and beyond because they mean what they say and they say what they mean. So yes, the Oakley group. Please yeah. check them out. Yeah. And if you have any other businesses that are out there that are going on, um, that are helping your jurisdiction out, please let me know. Because I think what I want to do is I'm going to add a tab to our website and then I'm going to add uh, all these places on our website and give them the kudos that they deserve. Um, I know Blue Help uh, was in communication with Bree the other day from Blue Help and they've got some fucking awesome stuff planned um, weekly, I don't want to give too much away, but they've got some awesome live stuff on Facebook. They want to keep you guys occupied. They want to keep your mental health straight. Um, I know we always pl- plug Blue Help, and 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 they've always been there. Um, but I don't want to give away too much. Uh, they're working on some really really cool shit. So, um, we'll put that stuff up on our website. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, which I talked about on my face our um, Facebook Live last night when we released. Podmageddon is if you have a small business outside of being a police officer, okay, I'm a DJ ish kind of kind of business is kind of sucking lately. Um, Mike does some stuff outside of work. I mean, everybody's got a side hustle. Uh, 
If you do have a side hustle and you have under 500 employees, which is pretty much going to be all of you, because if you have over 500 employees and you're still doing this job, you're an idiot. Um, I want you to check out SB, as in boy, A, Dot gov, the Small Business Association, uh, part of the stimulus package that was approved um, and uh, by, approved by the Congress and the Senate and signed off by the president were some great incentives for small businesses. Uh, you go on there, there's there's loan forgiveness, which is they give you a loan and then you don't ever have to pay it back, I think. Or uh, there's payroll loans. There's all different kinds of bridge loans and stuff like that, not through your bank, through SBA. You want to check that out because if it's free money for you to keep you going and that's how you're supplementing your income uh, and that's no longer available to you. Like for me, like nobody's doing every wedding has been canceled from now until the end of the year. So whatever weddings I had planned as a DJ, that's out the window. So I need that bridge loan. I need to be able to pay my employees. I need to be able to pay, you know, the uh, loan payment uh, on my equipment and stuff like that. So. Do yourself a favor, do some research, look into it. I text messaged Mike last night and I said, yo, you got to look into this. Um, All you need is your tax ID number and your bank account number where you want the money dumped into if they approve you. Um, They're going to ask you for your financials, which you should already know. You should know how much you make a year uh, on your side hustle, how much you're going to lose over this. Um, So look into it. So if it gets you a couple of thousand dollars, great. It holds you over. If it doesn't get you anything, you're no better off than where you are right now. But you need to start looking into, um, you know, what the stimulus package allows you. Don't just rely on those stimulus checks coming. And um, and when you get your stimulus check, make sure you put money away for the taxes next year on it. That's my advice. Yeah, no shit. That's true. Um, So uh, you want to talk about some up and coming guests? Oh, can we? Yeah. Yeah, you want to go, go first? Uh, you or me? Okay, all right. I'll I'll tell you mine. <laughs> so I got a reach. I almost said a reach around. I got a reach out from uh, a big fan that knows a member of the Police Academy cast from the movie Police Academy and all the Police Academies. Uh, so we are working on that right now and he will come on. I don't want to tell you who it is just in case it doesn't work out, but he will be coming on fairly soon. So I'm super psyched. Cause when I was a kid, that was my favorite cop movie to watch until lethal weapon. So that, <laughs> that's the one I'm working on. Mike, what do you got? Um, so if you guys don't know, I, I post a lot of, uh, you know, funny shit on the gram or what I don't post as much as Nikki here, but I, I try to post some funny shit on there, some funny stuff. Um, so a lot of the guys, there's, there's this guy, it's called the Philly offensive. And I post a lot of his stuff. The guy is fucking hilarious, hilarious. So check him out. Philly offensive. Um, I reached out to him. Uh, a lot of his videos are, um, they're all, I guess for the most part, uh, he sets them up. He has act, like st- staged, but they're not staged. They don't look staged. They look real. They're hilarious. Um, Philly offensive. I reached out to him. I said, dude, we got to have you on the show. We plug the shit out of you. Um, he's posted some stuff that people are using his material on a national scale and they're not giving him credit for it. Like big name, big, big stuff. Um, that sounds and, yeah, no shit. And they're using his skits and they're, they're playing his funny stuff. Um, do you want to see if you could pull up one of his videos and you can play it for our people? Um, he's hilarious. Um, <laughs> I can't even, I can't even, uh, I can't even ex- describe, you know, how funny these things are. You guys got to go check them out for, for yourselves. Um, who else did you want to, you want to talk about the medic? I haven't, I haven't, uh, confirmed him yet. Okay. But that's, there's another guy who's big, big time on Instagram. Um, a lot of followers, uh, we reached out to him as well. He's hilarious. Here's also, paper. Um, here he is. I'm roll patrol, dude. No, but seriously, you're supposed to use the wax paper and, and you're sniffing them and then you're touching them and you're putting them back. They smell like shit. All right. Look, just do me a favor. Just pick up the ones you touched and buy them because I don't want, I don't want to, I don't know where your dick beater has been. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> Listen, cuz, pick them the fuck up and put them in your bag, or I'm gonna even you up. Even you up? I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna even you the fuck up. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Pick them up. Oh, dude, I gotta. Oh, I want to use that term. I'm gonna even you up. <laughs> If you were in a grocery store and somebody said, I'm going to even you up, would you even fuck with them? I would just be like, all right, just like that guy did. You got to watch watch that video, folks. It's on YouTube. It's called Roll Patrol. Uh, I can't he wait. He is to hilarious. Oh, my gosh, bro. He He's – there. I, I watched one yesterday, and there was this guy, like, double parked, throwing trash out the window. And he was like, look at this guy throwing trash. And he goes over and he's excuse me. He's like, you like hospital food? And the guy's like, what? <laughs> he's like, you're going to be eating it for the next week unless you pick this trash up off the fucking floor. <laughs> uh, so, bro, you guys got to check him out. He's funny, 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 dude. Um, definitely want to have him on. Uh, he's been in, the, in the, on, the, on the mainstream social media platform for years. Uh, he just hasn't gotten the recognition that he deserves. So we really want to. Well, get him on the show while he's accessible. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we got some other uh, cool guests coming up that we haven't confirmed. Mike was talking about, uh, we had a um, medic fireman, uh, mm -hmm. Instagram sensation. I reached out to him a while ago and we had just crossed over from, um, uh, what was the, what were we using before Squadcast? Um, Skype. Uh, yeah. So we, we were crossing over from one media to the other and we tried to get him on and it didn't work out. But I think, Everything happens for a reason. Mike's always saying divine intervention, and I truly believe that because we didn't have him on now. Uh, then I think having him on now is more paramount because it would be good to get his comedy and his professional opinion about what's going on. So, No, uh, I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, so I got a funny story real quick before we leave, before cool. we cut this off. Yeah. Um, so I was supposed to go uh, camping. I was supposed to go down to Disney, right? Like I mm -hmm. mentioned at the beginning of this episode. I always like to lead things off on a funny note. <clears throat> so I go down, I rent this class A fucking U-Haul, right? Like a chartered bus, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And and the guy, I rent it from this guy for the week. It's a couple grand because, um, you know, it's a 10 sleeper. I'm traveling with a fucking small militia. Um, <clears throat> and we go down. This was a couple years ago. And we had a blast. <clears throat> and we were going to do it again. Mm -hmm. so that was the goal we were going to stay at the disney rv park and then we were going to go down to sarasota because i love sarasota the gulf coast mm -hmm. the water's beautiful you know it's nice quiet not a lot of people you know it's a place to be so anyway so i rent this fucking behemoth and i'm not an rv guy i never had one so i go down and <clears throat> our first night this was two years ago we stayed at um I think it wasn't Tampa. It was Jacksonville. We stayed in Jacksonville. So my first night, I get up. We get there successfully. And I didn't crash or hit any fucking power lines. It was great, right? Well, actually, let me back up. So I had to go get a rental car from Jacksonville International Airport. Okay? Driving this RV is like driving a fucking 18-wheeler. Mm -hmm. So I go to the airport to go to fucking Enterprise. Oh, and no. And it's an eight-foot barrier, dude. And I'm like, what the fuck? How am I going to get this? So I had to put the thing in park. There's no like door to hop out. I got to come out the side door. <laughs> There's no cops around, bro. There's no cops around. And I'm like literally bottlenecked in this fucking thing. And there's a line of cars behind me. And I'm like, how the fuck do I get this rental car? So needless to say, I told the kids, you know, hold what you got. I drove over the fucking sidewalk, almost tipped this fucking thing over, dude. Oh. And this isn't even the funny story. And I almost tipped this thing over and, you know, dishes falling out of the fucking thing. The thing's all jacked up, whatever. Anyway, so I'm able to get get the car. We get the rental car. We get to the RV site. I set up, right? Boom. Everybody's in. We're tucked in for a night. I wake up to take a piss at like four in the morning. Sun's barely coming up. I got boxers and a t-shirt on. I step down on the carpet and it's soaked in water, bro. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I go in the bathroom, the bathroom, the shitter's full, right? The shitter's full. <laughs> okay. So the shitter's full. I'm like, what the fuck, man? So I get out. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I open the side door of the RV. 
Again, I'm in boxers, t-shirt, flip-flops, right? I go around the sides to empty out the shitter because you have to, there's a release valve on the side that you pull out and you release the shit. Hold on. You, re- you release the shitter, right? Okay. So I go down and I go around and I release the shitter. And I realize the shitter's not flowing into the shitter tube in the ground. Shitter was full. Bro, so I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, the coupling was inseated on the shitter valve into the ground. Okay. So I'm like, oh, I could fix this. It's easy. So I go to cinch it down and it flings off and it, all the shit, bro. <laughs> No. <laughs> yes. It's like a loose fucking snake. It's just <laughs> flinging shit everywhere, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Dude. And I'm like, bleh, bleh. Not your face. It's, yeah, it splattered my face. No. It splattered my shirt. It splattered my flip flops, bro. No. The thing is fucking flinging out of control, flinging shit everywhere. And I'm like, like a shit up. snake, bro. Like a shit snake, <laughs> and I'm I'm like dry, I'm gagging, dude. I'm spitting. I'm throwing up. Dude. Yeah. So needless to say, I had to shower outside and cut my wife. I come in. I'm like completely naked. She's like, "What's wrong? What the hell happened? What are you screaming for?" And I'm like, "You don't want to fucking. Ask. You don't want to know. You don't want to know." Holy so, shit. Yeah, that's, that's my funny fucking RV story. So I learned, uh, and everyone that's got an RV is going to laugh their ass off when they hear that story. If not, uh, I'm sure they'll laugh their ass off. But trying to end on a positive note. What a way. What a good way, man. Uh, all right, folks. We got one in the books for you. Uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you want to email us, you can email us at nick at rollcallroom.com or mike at rollcallroom.com. We got some new posters in. If you want one of those posters, please inbox us on Facebook, Instagram, um, and let us know that you want a poster. We'll send it to you for free. We have some stickers left. Go on our website. We got some merch on there that you can buy. Uh, keep us going. Check out Tag Fink. Uh, there's a commercial in this episode for that that Tia from Resting Mom Face recorded for us. She did a great job. Um, check out bluehelp.org. Mike. Any parting words? No, make sure you guys check out Pod Mageddon, Sarge the Destroyer, and Tia Resting Mom, uh, Resting Mom Face. Um, it's a hilarious episode. It's good. Get them some more traction. Check them out. Be safe. Um, when in doubt, use your mask. Live your legacy. Cool. All right, folks, be safe. No more love, and I'd hate to see you waiting.